You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming, and as some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Don Chorus Devon's Path. So, this might be a little bit of a shorter video. I'm not sure how much more content this day has. But, as you'll find out from the uh, Psychic Connections video going up before this one, uh, my videos are going to be 20 minutes long now, so I can fit in five more minutes of fresh content for you guys to enjoy. So without further ado, let's jump right back into the pool with Devin and Rune, shall we? Alright, let's do it. Sorry, I should have thought about it beforehand and have a lighter workout this time so that you can keep up with us. It's 100% my fault. I need to tone it down with the competitiveness. Now that you've forced me to try to keep up with you, my point still stands. It feels nice, knowing he cares about me. I felt like he was trying to keep a distance from me the whole morning, as if he was on guard around me, but now he's the one to approach me and talk. I was afraid that I ruined this, but now, looking into his eyes, I again feel this thin connection between us, a thread of understanding. And oh my, a smile could melt ice. Taking a step towards me, Devin pats my head gently. Oh god, head pats are great. I freeze on the spot, but it only lasts for a second. This was nice. <laughs> head pat. He's like, oh, okay, day accomplished. We did it, boys. My guess is that this is his way of showing me he trusts me. It also has a side effect of making me blush hard, but thanks to my patterned fur, it's not that noticeable. Let's go back and change. Dinner will be served soon. Following Devin, I make my way into the locker room. Devin nods at Rune and goes straight to the showers while I stop for a moment and lean against my locker. Garvin? You don't look so good. Are you feeling well? I'm just a bit tired. Don't worry. That was the most intense workout I've had in a long while. Just a bit? You look like you're going to drop dead any minute now. I just need a moment. Don't worry. I should do this more often. I warned, I warned you I'm a bit out of shape. Oh, bless me. My legs don't feel too stable, so I sit down on the bench for a moment. I'm dead tired, but there's something satisfying about that feeling. Yep. That's never a bad idea. God, he looks so cute. I'll see you here tomorrow, then. I'm not agreeing yet. I'll see if I'll be able to walk after this. But I'd better go take a shower now. We don't have much time left. Good idea, yes. See you at dinner. Not wasting any time, I walk up to the closet to the closest shower and turn on the water. It's wonderfully refreshing after the heavily chlorinated pool water, and I drink a mouthful before starting to wash my fur hastily. That sounds like me. Still, I can't help but sneak a few glances at Devon. Rune might be nicely built, but next to the panther, he looks almost unimpressive. I don't know how much the feline had to exercise to look like this, but he for sure dedicated a huge portion of his life to it. It takes a lot of dedication to get there, and I wonder what his motivation was. I'd like to ask him about it, but how do I do it without sounding like a creep? How'd you get so hot, coach? No, definitely not like that. I'm really attracted to him, aren't I? I mean, I obviously knew it, but I'm only now starting to grasp it. It definitely makes any potential friendship with him more complicated. Actually, I'm not sure what I see him as. A teacher or an authority figure? A friend or just someone I have the hots for? How do I reconcile all these things? Thinking about the head pack he gave me just moments before, I feel as if I'm about to melt in the lukewarm water and slide down the drain. It's weird, thinking about this all while he's standing right next to me. I wonder if he has any idea. Devin finishes showering first and goes back to the locker room, leaving me alone with my thoughts. But no matter how hard I think, no answers come to me. I mean, that's not an easy thing to reconcile. Both Devin and Rune are already gone when I come back from the shower. Huh. Looks like Devin got out of there quick. Wonder why. I stood, under the I stood under the stream of water for a long time, regaining my composure. I wipe myself dry and dress quickly. I'm not going to be terribly late for dinner, but it's already after six o'clock, 16 o'clock. 
My legs are still protesting, but the shower helped a bit. Still, I'd be content with spending the rest of the day sitting. Time to go. So they run outside, each holding, yes, a freaking clothes hanger. I sat next to Rune as Travis already took the spot next to Devin when I got here. They dash towards the car, but as they reach it, the birds swoop down from the sky and attack them. So instead of talking with him, I idly nibble at a portion of my rice and mushroom stuffed cabbage rolls. Well, that sounds good. One of them tries to open the door. Some of them tries to open the car, but obviously the lock is conveniently jammed and he can't. Maybe that's good. I spent most of the morning and a good chunk of the afternoon with him. I don't want him, I don't want to impose on him. So they fight the vicious, raging birds by waving the clothes hangers in their general direction and manage to kill all of them that way. He's been rather quiet the whole dinner, but that's probably because Rune is busy talking with Jorgen and I'm sitting far away. Meanwhile, the guy with the key just lazily moves it around in the lock, which is shown in like three separate close-ups. They started talking about films, and Rune, and Rune turned out to be a fan of grade Z ones. Oh god, oh god, Z-budget movies. <laughs> wow. That's awful. Usually Jorgen is busy with Lake, but hey, where's Lake? Only now I notice he's not here, which is weird because with his energetic personality, he's a hard one to miss. Not as awful as the clapping scene. That one is a sight to behold. I need to show you later, after dinner. And after I'm done with the project I'm working on. Jorgen? Yeah? Where's Lake? Oh, I don't know. He went somewhere before dinner and hasn't returned yet. Well, that sounds like him. Yeah, although I never thought he'd miss a meal. But he's an adult. He doesn't need me to look after him. If he wants to come and eat, he will. I suppose he's right. Lake eats a lot, but definitely isn't a foodie. Maybe he has some snack bars in his room he'll munch on later. He gets some crazy ideas sometimes. Maybe he got tangled up in one, ra in one right now. Still, I can't help but feel a bit concerned. Maybe I should check on him. He's getting fucked by the werewolf in the woods. Uh, yeah, of course. We're going to message Lake, see how he's doing. I'll drop him a message. That won't hurt for sure. Maybe he really forgot about dinner. I send him a short SMS and stuff the phone back into my pocket. I asked Lake what's up. Maybe he just didn't check that time. Whew. This time I have my phone unmuted, so I hear when Lake replies almost momentarily. He got tangled up in something. Be there soon. Oh, he says he'll be here soon. <sighs> Thought so. Why are you concern so concerned about him? Do you have some plans regarding the main cutie? Uh, I just thought it was odd he's not here. You can ask him why when he gets here then. I put down the phone and returned to nibbling at the food, which is already starting to get cold. Hmm, <laughs> sorry. You look somewhat tense, Carvin. I suppose. The bat is more perceptive than I thought. I felt a bit on edge since yesterday evening, yeah. And what just happened at the swimming pool definitely didn't help. I might have gotten into a bit of a weird situation. Or maybe it isn't weird, and I just feel weird about it. Phew, I am here. Did you leave anything for me? Like, where were you? I'll tell you later. I got into a bit of a weird situation. Oh, really? One second, guys. <coughs> Throat is dry. Anyway, I'd rather not talk about it here. Lake? What were you doing, Lake? Um, want to meet somewhere later, then? How about we go to my room afterwards? Our room, Lake... But I'm fine with it. I'd like to hear about it, too. By the way, Carbon, thanks for the message. It's nice to know someone th thinks about you. So, what are we having? I'm famished. I'm, I can't pronounce that. Um, Calberletter. Mushrooms and potatoes. Oh, no, not mushrooms. You don't like mushrooms? Mushrooms aren't very poggers. No! No! Don't say that! Oh my god, you're not on Twitch, you silly kitty! 
<laughs> Lake? What are you talking about? Stop coming up with words that don't exist. They're all squishy and slimy and just... Ugh! I can't stand them. No one forces you to put any on your plate. Uh, I thought they were inside the... Jesus Christ. Kill a carry lean. <clears throat> um, a word I'm gonna butcher. That's that's much better. I can consume with a peace of mind. Watch, watching Lake put foot on his plate, I wonder what sort of trouble he got into. Knowing the line, it could be anything. Hope he didn't destroy any furniture. That wouldn't be unlike him. I glance once more at the panther, imagining him patting me again. Big padded paw ruffling my fur in his gentle smile, comforting me like a dawn chorus on a dark winter morning. They did it! There it is! It's the title! Right there, guys! They did it! <laughs> All the emotions swirling around in me make my head spin. I feel like I need to talk with someone about this or I'll explode. Hey, Carvin! Want some after dinner, Salmiak? After dinner, we said goodbye to the rest and went straight to Lake and Jorgen's room. Plopped onto the beds, we just chill in a refreshing quietness. I like it here. Just staying in with these two is a com in a comfortable silence. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know what he's talking about. It's very enjoyable doing stuff like that. Sure, you can toss them here. Don't be a lazy bum and come get it. I'm not tossing anything. You don't want me to spill them all over you. A Salmiaki shower. I woke up to Lake, grab one, and pop it into my muzzle. Mmm, haven't had them in a while. The salty, fiery taste takes me straight back to my childhood. We used to buy these after school with our pocket money, especially during the winter. How about you, Jorgen? Get away from me. Don't even come close holding that thing. Well, what? You don't like it? No one sane likes them, Lake. Lake shoots me a sideways glance, visibly confused. I thought that all Nordic people liked Samiaki. Not me. They're the reason why God hates us. Well, that's more for us. So, Lake, what's the situation you mentioned at dinner? Um, you see, I, it's a rather delicate and complicated thing, you know. It's like, why is it so hard to say? Promise me you won't laugh. Let me see where this is going. You might as well just say it. I think I have a crush on someone. Oh. Oh. Blake, that's a big deal. I told you that would happen, and I can't say I'm surprised. Wait. Who are we talking about? Who is it that you have a crush on? I didn't know it was possible, but Lake just blushed even harder than before. I don't want to tell. Um, does he not trust us, or just doesn't want to tell? It's rather unlike him to be secretive about anything. I always saw him as someone who wore his heart on his sleeve. Jorgen said that he saw it coming, which confuses me even more. I bet it's Torolf. One second, guys. Ugh. Maybe I don't know him as well as I thought I did. And yes, guys, I like watching Michael Rosen YTPs. They're funny. So, what were you doing before dinner? I went for a walk to the forest. Ah, that's not what I imagined. And certainly not what I had thought Lake would do in such a situation. My guess would have been that he'd come talk about it immediately. How serious is it? For me, it's always serious. It's not the first time, and so far all the crushes I've had have ended badly. Maybe I just have bad luck or something. Why is it so easy to blur the boundary between friendship and something more? What do you mean? I mean, when does friendship turn into love? Are those two even really separate feelings? I definitely say I love my friends. So it's just confusing when the boundaries blur and I don't know what I'm feeling. Ah, I see what you mean. I don't know if I can relate, though. Although, the only major crush I had was on my closest friend, not counting what I'm going through right now. But when I started feeling something towards him, it definitely felt different than just friendship. 
It's too easy for me to fall for my friends. Just getting close to them emotionally is enough. Did you ever feel, feel something for more than one person at the same time? Yeah, it happened to me once. It was rather confusing, too. I couldn't talk with anyone about this, which made it all even harder. Why not? Wanting two persons at the same time is rather frowned upon. I knew I wouldn't be understood. Besides, I had a crush on two boys from my class. Oh. I had a feeling Lake might be gay, but it never came up in any of our conversations. That's... nice, I think? I'm not entirely surprised, but that's really out of the blue. Even now, I'm sort of feeling something towards someone else, too, but I'm starting to get used to falling for my friends. Polyamorous people certainly don't have it easy, that's for sure. Not with how our society is organized. The primary objective of a family unit is still bringing up kids. Everyone assumes and expects exclusivity in a relationship, and opening the partner up to a possibility of a different arrangement is often impossible. I'm actually kind of poly myself, so... A little bit of a lore drop for me. I'm a little bit poly myself. I think I'd be open to something like that myself, and I don't doubt a lot of younger people feel the same way. We don't live in the same world as our parents and grandparents, and honestly, that's good. It's great to see that with every generation we get more sensible and empathetic. Yeah. I mean, a hundred years ago, interspecies relationships were ostracized, and now they're the norm. If someone wants a kid, they either adopt them or get pregnant through, the in, through in vitro fertilization, and it's nothing out of the ordinary for anyone. No one cares whose DNA their child has, and I've heard that it was a pretty important thing for parents in the earlier generations. I can only imagine the initial pushback against that. I've read about it, and it wasn't pretty, yes. People always react strongly when their basic beliefs and values are attacked. Try to put yourself in their shoes, and you'll quickly understand why it went like that. Imagine the core foundation you've built your stable life on challenged like that. Thankfully, that's already behind us, even though we still have a few issues to fight for. But yeah, polyamorous relationships can work, but they require a lot of work from everyone involved. In the end, it all depends on the parties and the relationship, what they're comfortable with, and what works for them. But the feelings of your partner should always come first. Pursuing other partners when they're not comfortable with that is subjecting them to emotional abuse. You had experiences with it? I didn't know you were in any relationships. Long ago, but it wasn't anything serious. We have a few polyamorous people in the LGBTQ community center I'm active in, so the topic frequently came up. Ah, that makes sense. Wait, does that mean Jorgen is queer too? Or maybe he's just volunteering there? Lake didn't react in any way, so he must have already known about it. Could I just ask, or would that be impolite? But anyway, we kind of switched to a different topic. Right. I didn't really want any advice, I just needed to get it off my system. Get it- oh, get it off my- get it out of my system. <laughs> Thank you for listening to me, that's really all I needed. It's hard feeling all those things, thinking about it all the time, and having to keep it all inside. Yeah, tell me about it. Hmm? Do you have a crush on someone too, Carvin? Oh, that one kind of slipped out on itself. But I wanted to talk about it with someone, didn't I? I... I don't know. I had a crush on someone back in middle school, and it felt different to what I feel now. When did it start? Just yesterday, I think. It's someone I already knew, but at this camp, I saw them in a different light. Do I know them? Yeah, I'd say so. So, who's the lucky person? Oh, I'm definitely not telling. And I'm not sure if I'd call them lucky. It's nothing serious, though. It's just confusing. And a bit stupid. Stupid? What do you mean? Ah... Uh, it's rather awkward. I don't think they're a person I should have a crush on. If I really have a crush, that is. So far, it's more like intrusive thoughts or something. But there's also this feeling of warmth when I think about them. Yeah, I know what you mean. But why do you think it's not right? 
I'd rather not tell, really. I hope you won't misunderstand me, though. It's not like I don't trust you, but I don't feel comfortable talking about this. I'm sorry. Well, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? For now, I'm just happy to get to spend time with them. The silence that falls on us feels heavy and full of uncertainty. The half-answered question hangs in the air like an ominous blade. What am I going to do now? Are you okay, Carbon? Not really. I think I can use a walk now. If that will help you. Sure. Alright guys, Alarm Chan is telling me that our extra long episode has now come to an end. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, it was nice spending time with these two. I had fun. And guys, in the comments, who do you think Lake has a crush on? I think it's Torolf. I definitely think it's Torolf. I think that kitty is getting him some kitty. <laughs> I probably could have phrased that differently, but I'm not going to. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.